Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect Epistle and Gospel for today, the second Sunday in Trinity. O Lord, who never fails to help and govern those who you bring up in your steadfast fear and love, keep us, we beseech thee, under the protection of your good providence, and make us have perpetual fear and love of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The First Epistle General of St. John, Chapter 3 Do not be surprised, my brother, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death and into life, because we love the brothers. He who does not love his brother remains in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life remaining within him. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and so we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, closing the heart of compassion against him, 
cannot have God's love remaining within him. My little children, let's not love in word only, or with tongue only, but also in deed and truth. By this we know that we are of the truth, and persuade our hearts before him. Because if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have boldness toward God, and whatever we ask we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. This is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son Jesus Christ, and love one another, even as he commanded. He who keeps his commandments remains in him, and he in him. By this we know that he remains us, by the Spirit which he gave to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 14. Jesus said to him, A certain man made a great supper, and he invited many people. He sent out his servant at supper time to tell all who were invited, Come, for everything is ready now. And they all, as one, began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, so I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I must go and try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. That servant came and told his lord these things. The master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor, the maimed, the blind and the lame. The servant said, Lord, it is done as you commanded and there is still room. The Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, that none of those men who were invited will taste of my supper. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A certain man made a great supper. Verse 16 When the fullness of time was come, God the Eternal Father said, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, I take no pleasure. Then said the Son, I come. He came that he might take away the valueless sacrifice and establish the one full and perfect propitiation for the sins of the world. And indeed it was time. All great creation was groaning and working in pain, waiting for redemption. And then he said, I come. The souls of the faithful were in Hades. Prophets, patriarchs and kings desirous to see his day. Prisoners in hope, anxious to be released by the blood of the covenant. And he said, I come. Men wandered in darkness, desiring light. The whole head was sick, and the whole heart faint, and in their error, darkly, and in their sickness, faintly, they sought the Lord, if only they might feel after him. And he said, I come. They did not know the way of God, how they might walk, and they needed a guide. And he said, I come. They were sunk in sin and found that the old blooded sacrifices and burnt offerings did nothing for the guilt. They needed a more perfect sacrifice. And our Lord said, I come. They knew not what the nature of God was. And they made for themselves gods in the likeness of men. How would they know without a teacher? And Jesus Christ said, I come. At this day, his answer is still promptly when he is needed. Look, I come. Does any father desire his little one to be taken into the arms of Christ and blessed? I come. Does any man need direction, guidance, help in the way of life? Look, I come. I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Does any desire sustaining food along the way? He says, I come and the bread I give is my flesh, 
which I give for the life of the world. Is any of you burdened with the weight of sin, anxious for pardon and reconciliation? I come, and even though your sins are scarlet, they shall be made as white as new wool. Already in sorrow with a sore heart, I come to bind the broken-hearted. Are any of you dying? He is still ready with his answer. I come, and when you go through the waters, I am with you. How striking is the readiness of our blessed Lord. Let us now look at today's Gospel and see how this is met by man. Christ is represented as having made a great supper, the Holy Eucharist, and to that he invites us all. And he sends out his messengers, bidding them to come. But they all, with one consent, begin to make excuses. The messengers go to the man who has bought oxen and invite him to the supper of the Lord, and his answer is, Leave me. I must be excused. They go to the man who has bought a farm and his answer is, I beg you, excuse me. They go to the man who has married a wife and his answer is, I cannot come. I come, says our Lord. I cannot come, says man. I come to man, says Christ. I cannot come to Christ, says man. It was the rule amongst the early Christians to communicate every Lord's Day. The rule of the church is laid down in its service books, then ordered that all who were open and scandalous livers, all those who had committed a deadly sin and had not been reconciled to God, should leave church before the consecration, after the gospel. Now suppose some good old bishop of that day were to rise from the dead and come into the church, what would he see? Directly the sermon is over, a rush of everyone in the church, men, women and children, out of the door, and only maybe two or three, maybe a few more, remaining to share in the Lord's body. That is what he would see. And what would he say? What is this? All these notorious sinners, all these open profligates, all these burdened with mortal sin, cutting them off from the grace of God. Take me back to my grave, for I don't want to see any more of such horrible days. But if I happened to be present, I would say to him, you jump to conclusions too rashly. Times are altered. It is not the criminal and the profligate who go out of the church before the consecration of the Blessed Sacrament and are unworthy to eat of the Lord's body. But it is those who cannot make up their minds to do what the Lord has commanded. It is those who are half-hearted, who wish to serve God, but do not wish to serve him very much. Then, I doubt not, the old bishop would turn upon me with a wrathful face and say, Then let me go back to my grave, for this is far worse, a thousand times worse. The whole Christian world has grown cold of heart and dead in faith. If all with one consent begin to say, I cannot come. I had rather they were hot or cold, 
but because they are neither hot or cold, away, I cannot bear to look upon their faces. Let me go back to my grave. I know what is passing in your minds as well as if you had skulls of glass. And this is what I see that not a few of you are thinking. Here he is again, the old fool, always hammering away at communion. Can't he leave us alone? Why doesn't he talk to us about something else? Let him preach to us some real stinging gospel truth and make us wince. Anything but this eternal preaching about how we should come to communion. Let me tell you why I preach about this and hammer and hammer at it again and again. Because it is a good stinging gospel truth and the grumbling that goes on is because your consciences wince at what I have to say. Listen, for once upon a time other people talked like you. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God in mercy set them bread from heaven, manna, to feed them on their way through the wilderness. What did the people say in return for this blessing? Were they grateful? Were they eager to gather up the food of the angels? No way. For they sat and grumbled at the entrance to their tents and said, Our soul is dried away. There is nothing besides this foul manner before our eyes. Put it in modern language, we might say, our souls have dried up for their lack of preaching of free justification and no good at all in keeping the law. We don't want any of your sacramental teaching, no communion for us, we can do without it. Our soul abhors this light food. As for this holy communion, there is nothing but that preached to us, year in, year out. Well, how about this? If this sacramental teaching is not God's own blessed gospel, there is no meaning in words. I have never said anything so strong, and this is what Christ himself spoke. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and are dead. I I am the living bread which came down from heaven, and if any man eateth this bread, he shall live for ever. The bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for you, for the life of the world. Truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Now, mind you, when Jesus said this, many of his disciples said, This is a hard saying. And from that time they went back and talked no more with him. It is still so today, and it will always be so just as many of the old Israelites loathed the manna and said, Our souls are dried away, for there is nothing but this dread manna before our eyes. So there will always be faithless disciples, who when they hear the invitation to share in the body of Christ to the true manna, will say, This is a hard saying, and will no more walk with him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. From paragraph 13 of our Order of Service I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all men according to their needs. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that we who confess thy name may be united in thy truth, live together in thy love, and show forth thy glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Direct this nation and all the nations in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour all men and seek the common good. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Save and comfort those who suffer, that they may hold to thee through good and ill, and trust in thy unfailing love. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in faith, and grant us with them a share in thy eternal kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O merciful Father, for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul says. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 
Hear also what St John says. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose nature it is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that me we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By one Spirit we were all baptised into one body. Endeavour to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. Because through him thou hast created all things from the beginning and fashioned us men in thine own image. Through him thou didst redeem us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man, to die upon the cross, and to rise again for us. Through him, therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Hear us, O Father, through Christ thy Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise, and grant that these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this, as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. 
Wherefore, O Lord, with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of his saving passion, his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven. And we look for the coming of his kingdom. We pray thee to accept this our duty and service, and grant that we may so eat and drink these holy things in the presence of thy divine majesty, that we may be filled with thy grace and heavenly blessing. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, from the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen.
the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? For we, being many, are one bread, one body. We all partake of the one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Let us pray. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, and his blood, which was shed for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank thee that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and that thou dost keep us thereby in the body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. And we pray thee, 
that we may continue as living members of that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>